I've been walking for about an hour now. No Wi-Fi networks, no cell service, no towers near me at all. Nothing but the sweet sound of geese and this LoRa radio. This is the Helltech LoRa 32 V4. Touch screen, 18650 battery, built-in GPS, literally everything that you could possibly need for a nice hike like this. And for the past two weeks, I've been testing this LoRa radio, not on a desk, but out here. Now, this isn't just a regular LoRa radio. Helltech took their popular LoRa 32 series and built a full expansion radio around it, and it comes with almost everything. Now, we've gone over the Helltech LoRa 32 V4 before in another video on the Meshnology N39, which is arguably still my favorite LoRa radio, but Typically, the Helltech LoRa 32 V4 is made for like DIY kits, for you to buy a case for it or print your own case for it or get a kit like this from Meshnology. It was a DIY feel to it. This is not that at all. This is basically everything all in one and you can expand on it. Now at first glance, if I can compare the screen to anything, I would say it feels like an old iPhone 5. It does come with a whip antenna, but I put on my own antenna because these whip antennas are my absolute favorite. A built-in GPS that actually does its job very well. USB-C for power and data, your power button, reset button, your user select button, as well as another programmable button. You've also got GPIO pins at the back, as well as this belt clip that I absolutely love. Like this is one of my favorite parts of this radio right here. Now aside from the touch screen, the back panel, the belt clip, and the antenna, everything else is made out of this really nice aluminum and it gives it a really good professional feel to it, like it's strong. Now what I really don't like is this back panel. It's made out of the thinnest, most flimsy piece of plastic. I, I just don't understand why everything else is premium except for this back panel. Like even the belt clip is premium. The back panel is just, look at it, it's warped. If, you, if I can get it at the right angle. Oh yeah, there we go, it's warped right there. Let's open her up, take a look at what the inside looks like. Now everything in this LoRa radio is powered by an 18650, which does its job very well, and the 18650 comes with it. Now you see these female connectors right here? These female connectors are why it's called the expansion pack. Basically, Meshnology offers like temperature sensors, humidity sensors, light sensors, and even a gyroscope. Now behind this shielding right here, you have the actual LoRa 32 V4, as well as the GPS module. Now for two weeks, this LoRa radio was my daily driver, and there were things that I liked, and there were some things that annoyed me, but for the most part, I liked almost everything. Let's start off with the Meshtastic Fancy UI and the full color TFT touchscreen display. The touchscreen is, is pretty good actually. Let's say hello. It works exactly how it's supposed to and I wouldn't call the UI laggy. All of this is being powered by an ESP32 S3 in the LoRa 32 V4. And I do need to give them props on the touchscreen because it does work very well, actually. And I really do like the Meshtastic Fancy UI. It just keeps getting better and it works. Now to the other LoRa radio GPSs that I've tested, this one gets a solid seven out of 10, and which is a pretty decent score. Once you step outside with a clear line of sight, it'll connect almost instantly, but indoors, eh, it kind of was inconsistent, but that's normal. I mean, if you think a GPS is supposed to connect while you're in a basement, you're fairly mistaken. When it came to being in wooded areas or a vehicle, it never disconnect. It would only disconnect if I went into a tunnel and that was pretty much expected. It does support map tiles, but I couldn't figure out how to actually put the map tiles on there. So if you know how to do it, please reach out to me. Did I have any need for the GPIO at the back? No, I didn't but I like the fact that it's there. Now, a couple of people have said that they wanted the UI to be vertical instead of horizontal, and I kind of disagree with that. I like the fact that the keyboard is wide enough where I can use two hands and it just works. Now, keep in mind the touchscreen, the GPS, the expansion modules, if you so add them, everything is being powered by one 18650, which it actually did pretty good. I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't expecting much, it being one single 18650, but on our best test, it was about 18 hours, and on our worst test, it was around 14 hours. So, I wouldn't really give this the longevity as like, let's say the N39, but it definitely did good in its own right. Now, there is no audio feedback, but you can get a buzzer module and, well, that'll fix that. Now, it goes into deep sleep just like this, and it saves power, which, 
is a really nice feature. Of course, you can change it to turn screen awake and keep it awake and you could do a lot of things that drain the absolute hell out of your battery, but you can clip this to whatever you like and well, I like the fact that I can clip something on my belt hip or clip it to my bag or clip it to my backpack. That's a really nice feature. Now, I love how I look like I'm getting myself into trouble while also reaffirming my virginity while having this clip to my belt and a pineapple pager clip to my belt and a card pewter in my pocket. I mean, it's just been an influx on pager-like devices. Now, you might be asking yourself, what about the range? It's very good. As a matter of fact, the Helltech LoRa 32V4 is among my favorite LoRa radios that I've ever tested, and I could not wait to get my hands on one of these. Now, I expected it to perform just like the Meshnology N39, and as a matter of fact, it did. It performed almost exactly the same. It single-handedly outperformed every LoRa radio that I threw at it. I'm talking about the L1, the Seed Studio Tracker, the Helltech LoRa 32V3, the T-Deck, the T-Beam, and the Wisp Block. Now, in a densely populated area like Washington DC, the max range was around 1.5 miles. Now, most of our tests were done in a suburban setting with lots and lots of trees. And even then we had a max transmission of six miles and the worst test that we had was still three miles. Now, Helltech has set the standard when it comes to lower radios, especially when it comes to the V4. The V4 is among the best lower radio modules I think there is. And I like the fact that they've taken the kind of rack approach where you can add different modules and it's a solderless approach, which is very nice and useful for people who don't have and don't know how to use a soldering iron. This backplate, however, this backplate is disappointing. Like, I don't understand how all of it is a premium product. Like, everything is premium. Every single thing except for that backplate. Like, I, I don't get it. Let me have you guys take a, take a look. You see how it's warped once you screw it in? And e that's even if you lighten it up and you don't overscrew it, it's still warped. Like, the belt clip is phenomenal, but the back plate just, man. Now, another thing I don't like are those buttons right there. Yes, they, you know, they work. They're buttons, they clicky, they turn them on and off, but I don't like it when like devices have that reset button right next to the power button. So if you're like holding the radio and you accidentally click the reset button, well, the device just resets and that can be annoying sometimes. Range, 10 out of 10. The design, seven out of 10. GPS, seven out of 10. The Meshtastic Fancy UI, nine out of 10. Touch screen, seven out of 10. Now, ever since I tested the Meshnology N39, which is powered by the Helltech LoRa 32V4, I have missed it dearly. That's because the Helltech LoRa 32V4 just works and having a standalone device and a even better standalone device built around the V4 is Awesome, man, like, cause it just, it works on another level. The range is perfect. Everything about it is amazing. The fact that we can expand and add different modules to this is solid 10 out of 10. Backplate though, come on, man. You could do better. I know you could do better because you did 80% of the work perfect and then it was just like, eh. If you wanted to grab your own Helltech LoRa 32 V4 expansion board, you can do so at meshnology.com, which thankfully they sent this in for testing, and it was a really fun LoRa radio to test. I've also linked it in the description if you guys want to check out their website, because their website has some of the best LoRa radios, and the best LoRa radio cases, and a lot more. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a like, share, subscribe, it helps the algorithm, and it helps me, and I'd appreciate it. We go over different LoRa radios every two weeks on our channel, as well as doing periodic updates on different variations of tech daily as well as pushing different maker propaganda every single day so if you aren't there we'll definitely see you there i really hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for the love and support we'll see you next time